Do you guys actually know, like, the full story? Like, how I became a streamer? I feel like most of you guys probably do, right? Do you guys know the full story? Wait, a lot of people actually don't. Do you guys want to hear a little bit of- put a one in chat if you want to hear. I, I'll, I'll do the short version. Alright, so... I went to school for... for I, you know what? I'll start at the beginning. I went to college at NYU. Just a poor boy from, from a poor family. Badass family. So I, I went to school and my, my plan originally was to be pre-med. And guess what? It wasn't really for me. <laughs> Go figure. How did you get into NYU? Because I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. So I, I went, uh, I, I was, I was going to be pre-med. Uh, I was going to NYU and I, I was actually really interested in like psychology and all that good jazz. And I, so I was going to NYU. One of my, one of my uh, prereqs was a writing class and I was writing and I was like, oh my God, I want to be a writer. It's like, this is, uh, this is what I want to do. Sure enough. Crazy system of events. I won't get super into it right now. While I was doing that, my my family got we lost our house really because of like the 2008 like housing crisis, like all that shit. Family's house ended up getting foreclosed on, and I didn't really have any money or like, and I didn't want to like tax my 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 family, you know. And I ended up not having enough money to get my housing deposit to go through, so I ended up in New York without a place to stay for a couple of years. And I got plenty of crazy good stories from that time. And I feel like it really kind of made me a lot of who I am today, even though it was kind of, you know, in theory, a rough time. I, I, it ended up okay for me. So there was like a year period where I didn't have a place to go. And uh, I had a lot of friends. We, I figured shit out. But when I got back in school, I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to work on video games. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? I don't care about money. I'm going to do what, like, I'm going to do what I like. I've always loved video games. And I, I started taking video game design classes at NYU. And sure enough, I eventually get to the point that I'm graduating. And I graduate from NYU. Uh, from the the, I, I was in Gallatin for people who know stuff about NYU, so I did a lot of the creative writing major still. I did a lot of computer science stuff and a lot of video game design stuff, and I, so I graduated with what degree? You guys are gonna laugh. Uh, Gallatin, you you make your own degree, so I concentrated in narrative narrative strategies for contemporary media. I basically wanted to write story for video games. Yeah, Gallatin, PP Lab, yeah, yeah, yep. So the most NYU degree that you can get. It is like the most NYU shit that you could possibly do. I graduate from NYU and around the time I graduate, my plan is to get my master's degree in game design. And I had some fantastic teachers. Uh, people who were super into game design. Jesper Yule, uh, Jesper Yule, Robert Yang, Frank Lance, uh, Bennett Foddy, like incredible, incredible professors. I learned so much about, about game design, like so, so much. And I wanted to get my master's. What? Yeah. It's fucking crazy, right? Bennett Foddy. Yeah. Actual pog, right? Uh, dude, legends, literal legends. It was a very good program. And I, uh, I was excited to get my master's degree and I was working for Instacart at the time. And when I was working for Insta Instacart, there was basically, uh, I'm good at games. You guys probably don't remember that I'm good at games because I'm just so busy. Like, uh, you know, uh, so busy being entertaining that you guys probably forget I'm good at games. But I fucking, I, I, I was working on, um, or sorry, I, I wasn't, uh, I, I was working for Instacart and it was gamified and I found all the cracks in it. And I was making at Instacart when it first started, 
about $41 an hour. I found the perfect way to make $41 an hour from Instacart. I was cashing. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna get my master's degree. That's all, like, I'm just gonna keep working for Instacart. And they basically messaged me and they're like, hey, do you wanna work here? We realized that you completely broke our system. We have to change it. Can't, like, do you wanna come work? Like, like work like a, a different job, like not being a shopper. And I was like, absolutely not. I'm making $41 an hour. And then they basically just changed it so you couldn't do it. And I was like, all right, fuck, I need to get a new job. Uh, basically what happened for Instacart, that what I would do was uh, I would wait in the Barnes and Nobles upstairs over the, the place where I would shop. And I knew where everything was and I would get there before. You could actually Two register six, before five, the six, orders cheese. came in. Most X people would order their groceries the, the few nights before. I would shop for every single person's order the entire time. I would go into Whole Foods, I would plop in my headphones, I would listen to Aaron, Ma it was Aaron Mankey, was that his name? The guy who made Lore, I would listen to Lore, and I was so good at getting the groceries, and I would, just, I would shop everybody's groceries, and then you had to stay there a certain amount of time to actually make the full money for it, and I would sit in the Barnes and Nobles, and I would teach myself how to code. I would literally sit there, and I would just read, like, like at the time, I was learning a lot of, like, Angular JavaScript. Uh, I was, like, trying to learn, like, a bunch of shit like that. And I would sit in the Barnes & Noble, and I would just read the entire time. I did some other stuff to make money, too. You know, I did, did what I had to do. So, they changed the way that Instacart worked. So, I couldn't make the full money anymore. Um, and I was like, all right, you know what? I saved enough money. I saved enough money. Now I should probably get something to build my resume. And I swear it was like fate, man. I bumped into my buddy Ethan on the street that night. And he was like, man, you should stop. We used to hang out with each other in class. And it was almost like the first person I ever streamed to. Because Ethan sat behind me in our philosophy class. And I used to play Warlords of Draenor on my laptop. And he would watch me the whole time. And I would turn around and I'd be like... And he would be like... And he would just watch me play WAD. He would literally watch me play WAD in college. It was like the first time I ever streamed. <laughs> and Ethan walked up to me and he's like, dude, you love games. You should come work at MLG. And I was like, really? Like, dude, like, I don't know how to do anything. He was like, just come. The next day, I literally, the next day, I have an interview at MLG with a guy named Will who ended up becoming a very good friend. And Will is interviewing me, and he remembered me from the Game Center because I had played StarCraft against him one time. I'm wearing a suit. He's like, hey, do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? And I'm like, no, I don't know how to do fucking any of this, man. And he goes, you know what? You got the job. And sure enough, the next day, I am an employee at MLG. And... I was like, why did you give me... Why did you give me the job? He was like, I knew you would learn everything. I could just tell. And he told me to never wear, he told me to never wear a suit again. And then I ended up becoming a play-by-play -play caster and I had to wear the, uh, I had to wear the suit like every day. But I'm working at MLG and I loved the job so much. And I would, I would sleep in the office, on the couch, in the game room, in the office, because I would wait for everybody to leave the office. And I would sit in the studio and I would teach myself how to use the switchboard. I would teach myself how to use the lights. I would put stuff on the teleprompter and I would practice operating it. And I would read off the teleprompter. I would fake cast. I learned how to use the audio board. I learned how to use every single fucking thing that I could. And uh, how old are you? I'm 29 now. And I just wanted to be ready for any fucking job. I wanted to be ready for any job they had. And I wanted to become a caster eventually. And, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget, sure enough, one day, I'm, I'm working on the switchboard for Chris Puckett and Benson, they're casting Rocket League, one of the most successful shows that ever happened on the MLG YouTube, and it was luck, you know, that it went so well, and, uh, Ethan had my back, Harold, who's a very good friend of mine, had my back at the time, and we were all doing the show together. And Puckett, a few days later, pops out. And keep in mind, at the time, I was making content that I knew would never get used just to show what I could do. I started writing top fives from Rocket League, and I would voice them all myself, and then I would give them to Chris, Chris Puckett, with, with a script, 
and um, with a script and, uh, and uh, with all the plays. And then I'd be like, hey, Chris, if you want to make this, you can voice it. And I would, give, I would give it to him so he would at least hear my voice and hear what I could do. And one day, Chris walks into the studio and he goes, hey, I am getting married. I need someone to fill in for me. Does anyone know any New York-based talent? I said, Chris, could, do you mind if I give it a try? That was the first time that I ever play-by-play -play casted. And I play-by-play -play casted for, uh, in Chris Puckett's place, I play-by-play -play casted with Benson for the Rocket League Finals at MLG. And uh, that's the thing with luck. You have to fucking keep practicing so the time that you get that lucky shot, you don't fuck up. If I fucked up, who knows where I would be right now. But I practiced every day before that, even though I never knew if I was going to get that chance. And then when I got the chance, I did all right. I didn't do, I didn't do insane. Bring in the VOD. You want to see? It's too, it's kind of cringe. Because like, I definitely wasn't as good. I got better every single time, but I was good enough. Actually, Swarm already looked to me like the more dominant team this game. And they're going to yeah, get a goal get as well there. in the first minute. That's packed. Impressive play from both teams. Oh my god, dude! Oh my god, dude! Yo, dude! Oh my god, man! And the first time I ever play my play cast, dude. October 11th, 2015. You know, that's the best thing about, like, looking back on things like this. You know? You just get to see it all. You, you, you don't ever have to forget. You look nervous. I mean, I was I was definitely a little bit nervous, man. I gotta I gotta lose uh, I gotta lose some weight. I was a little bit skinnier then, you know. This is the first time I ever cast it, and uh, after that, I would just grind. And you know, my my thing that I always tell people when they're like, "Yo, I want to be a content creator," you know, the trick to it, in my opinion, always make work for yourself, even if it's cringe. Oh, what I get? Oh! This shit. This shit is so cringe now. But I taught myself how to use everything in the fucking studio. How to use everything in the fucking studio, and we built this show. This shit is fucking cringe. This shit is literally cringe. But my first ever streams on this channel in 2016. It's this this Dungeons and Dragons show that I made with a bunch of my friends. A Dungeons and Dragons show created by you. At the start of each game of Pug Crawl, everyone rolls to see which character they'll be playing in the selected scenario. These characters are submitted by you. Oh, if we roll your character, we have to play it for the oh, entire night. It's hard this to watch. be both a blessing and a curse. Tonight, I get to play a big baby. <laughs> Goog. Each week, one person is the dungeon master. Tonight, that's me. Before the show, the dungeon master designs his campaign around a player-submitted scenario that we spin on a wheel. Then, the rest, you play like any other game of Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so tonight's theme was submitted by Socrates, and it's off-Broadway pirates. <laughs> Throughout the show, you can interact with us live using chat. How do you proceed? Socrates. Chat wants me to go inside. I think I think I'm gonna go with chat. And if you donate, we can hear your suggestions on stream. New and there's one right there. Wow, Doug has big hands. All w right, at least it's money. One of the best parts about Pug Crawl is getting to see everyone's creations get all mashed together. Where else could you see a dwarf pirate butterfly get lost in a retirement home? Come join us for a night of Pug Crawl. Dylan and I have talked. And oh, and the guy who got me the job at MLG, he shot that video and he was working behind the scenes on all the stuff. We probably got like what, like a thousand viewers, maybe like a thousand viewers back then, and we were like, "Holy shit, we're fucking huge, man!" We thought we were fucking crazy back then. One K viewers was a lot bigger than one K is now, too. Like it, it was pretty fucking crazy. Like it was pretty fucking crazy, uh, and we were fucking stoked. You know, we we were we were fucking man, um, man. It was those were good times, but. Yeah, I think, like, the, the whole thing was, was I was always making myself work. Always making myself work. Before Gifted Subs, we were getting 1,000 viewers, and I would say we probably had 10 subs. That was all we made. 
I mean, we would literally split the money. So what we would do with the money was like when we would make money off the show, we would take it and we would just go buy video games and then we would like play them. Like I remember Natalie and I used pug crawl money to buy everybody, um, to buy everybody, uh, what's it called? Was it oh, the Alohan Pokemon? And everybody got like a free copy of the Alohan Pokemon. And like that was, that was what we got from pug crawl money wise. That, that was about it. Yeah. Uh, but, but still the thing was, was made myself work. And you know what? Pug crawl turned into the thing that ended up getting me an agent, which was really important down the line. And I just kept working. And Asma was talking about like my insane grind period. Before that even happened, I basically what I was doing was I would just cast anything. So first, the thing that I started casting was Smite. And I casted all the Smite League. And that was when I became a really good caster, in my opinion. And I casted Smite League. World of Warcraft came along, and I always wanted to cast World of Warcraft. I was producing the show, and I asked to cast. I had a full reel ready. I casted, and then after that moment, I will never forget. Olivia, who's in charge of the program, she said, Hey, do you want to go cast a European show? And I said, Yes, please. She said, When? She said, Don't worry about it. Go cast more for this show. The next day, I was on a plane to Ukraine. I cast a 14 hour straight with Healing Stat. And that was the first time I met Healing Stat. After that, I hosted or play-by-play -play casted every single WoW event for like two or three years. And then on top of that, I was casting, I was casting at the, at the time, Call, Call of Duty. But for Call of Duty, I would do like Snapchat duty. I would do interviews. I would do anything that everybody else didn't want to do. And then all of a sudden I was hosting, I was doing play-by-play -play and just moved up, moved up, moved up, never stopped. Always kept working, always kept always kept going, always kept te teaching myself more and more and more and more and more. And at the peak of my work, and keep in mind, I said, always make, always make stuff. When I was still working on Pug Crawl, I said, I want to make a podcast about World of Warcraft. Hotted and myself came up with the idea for Allcraft. Hotted put in a lot of work. I love Hotted to this day. Um, and me and Hotted, we worked on all craft together way, way, way back. But Hotted and I made all craft together. And our first guest on all craft was this guy. He would get maybe, you know, maybe like 4,000 viewers. And his name was uh, Asmongold. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. And we did, we did the episode. And wait, I kind of want to pull it up. And at the end of the episode, he goes, boys, what time next week? And he invited himself on the show. He was the first guest, guest of Allcraft, and he invited himself on the show. The thing was, I think one of the other things that really helped me become better I, people, content creators who are like, don't read the comments, like, just do you, King. They are weak. Read every fucking comment, but understand it is one viewer saying it and get better. Like, you have, the content creators who say that, they don't get better and they fucking suck. You read every comment. And some people, like, if you're good at your job, you will read you will read some of the comments and be like, okay, this person's jealous, nothing here. This person's mad, they had a bad day at work. I did my job, I was their outlet. Beat me up, I don't give a fuck. You see over and over again, wait, I have a tendency to pause at a weird time. Fix it, watch the video. It's hard to watch yourself back. You watch the fucking video, you get better, you move on, you see if the comments change. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that was one of the things that I did well. And I, I just, like, fucking tried to get better every single time. At my peak grind, at my peak grind, I was, I was casting. Every Tuesday, I would cast Call of Duty. After I casted Call of Duty, I would stream. I would go to sleep. I would wake, or, or no. Sorry, I would stream until my flight. 
I would fly to Las Vegas and I would sleep on the airplane. I would get off the airplane and I would do a short, just chatting stream on my phone. And after I did that entire, that short little stream on my phone, I would go live for the H1Z1 tournament. After the H1Z1 tournament, I would go to the casino and I would gamble for like an hour. I would get on my plane. I would fall asleep on the plane. I would wake up. I would sit down and I would cast Call of Duty. I was hosting Call of Duty World League at the time. I would leave an hour early from... I would leave an hour early on Thursdays and I would um, do all craft with Asmin. And then I would stream after. And I would stream all day. Fly uh, Like Friday, I would sleep late. I would wake up again, do another stream, go to sleep, wake up. Saturday and Sunday, I would cast World of Warcraft. Monday, I would fly to New York, shoot all day for my other job, and then fly back and start again. I did that every single day for seven months. Every single fucking day. And that was the first time I hit a thousand subs. And that was when I started getting a lot of casting work. Then eventually, Allcraft started to do really well. And truth be told, that was when Blizzard and I started to have a problem. Uh, and I ended up getting let go from my job at MLG. And uh, sure enough, uh, that turned into me not doing well and turned into me not doing Call of Duty. And Asmin was like, dude, you should just fucking stream, dude. You were always supposed to just fucking stream, dude. You'll make better money if you just fucking do it, dude. You're good at it. Blah, 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 blah. And he was really fucking supportive. But I don't know what it was. I, when that happened, I felt so betrayed by Blizzard because I gave that company fucking everything man and i like i did work hard i fucking loved it i knew i did a good job and like i was so fucking upset because it was like always my dream to be there and i remember i walked outside and i was not a big streamer at the time you know i never really got stopped on the street or anything like that unless i was at like a convention or something and i was just crying on the street and i was on the phone with my friend Ethan and I said I think I'm done making content it was the first time ever that I was like I'm done I don't think I can do this anymore like I just feel like my like I got like let down by like my family you know and I shit you not this is one of the biggest reasons I didn't stop A guy stops me on the street and goes, Rich Campbell, I watch your stream and I watch Asmund stream and I watch McConnell stream when he streams. And he said, I watch you during work. You help me get through the day. And you randomly, you gifted five subs and I got one. And I just wanted to say thank you. And also he was like, and this is my girlfriend. And I was like, I knew all my viewers were Chad's. All five of you. I knew you were Chad's. And, uh, it was like in that moment that I, that I really remembered being in the grocery store, listening to Aaron Mankey uh, and listening to that podcast, listening to Lore and how that got me through my day. You know, that got me through my day. I would work and it got me through my day and it made work easy. And I was like, fuck, I have like the honor of getting to do that. I am making somebody else's work day or their, their day better. That's... That is like, I, that's what I fucking want to do. And I said, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep making content. And, but first I'm going to play this PoE league. So I didn't work at all for a little while. I did nothing but play PoE. That's when I started watching cute dog stream. And that night I got an invite to host Dota. I had an invite to host Dota and I hosted Dota for the first time ever. I got a message from a guy named Vlad, who's still a close friend of mine to this day. And he said, Itch, 
I would like you to come. I can't do his accent anymore. I haven't heard him in so long. I, I used to be able to perfectly match his voice. Because I used to hear him talk all the fucking time. I used to hear him all the fucking time. I could do it perfectly. No, 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 no. Not that Vlad. Uh, Star Ladder Vlad. I used to be able to do his voice perfectly when I heard him all the time. Um, good fucking guy. Good fucking guy, man. And Vlad, he actually, the first time that I hosted WoW, I, he asked me if I wanted to host anything else. And um, I said, I really want to host Hearthstone. And he was like, stay in Ukraine uh, and I'll give you a Hearthstone gig. I have one coming up. I said, I actually can't do it because I have an obligation, but if you fly me back, I can fly back in two days. And he said, okay, you got it. I flew back. It was actually, I, the second I got off the, actually, no, that was when I got off the plane to Dubai. So I flew back. I, re, I did all my work. I finished all my work for the week at MLG, flew back, did a Hearthstone event, flew back again, did another event, flew back, did another Hearthstone event in Dubai, had to finish all of my work, flew back, and that was the first time I met Mike Morheim. I remember I was so stinky off the plane. And I was so excited to meet Mike Morheim, and I didn't think he was gonna know me. And Mike went, hi, Rich, nice to meet you. I was like, oh my God. But I knew Vlad, Vlad knew I was a good host. And uh, I, oh, I've, I've met Mike Morheim a few times, and I've like had the pleasure of actually going out to dinner with him. People forget this, or sorry, lunch, or breakfast rather. Uh, messed up that multiple times. I did the first MDIs, like I was, I, I, it was a pretty cool thing to get to be there at the early MDIs and kind of, uh, it was really me and Sloot casting a lot of those together. And the first MDI, that like really big show that we did was uh, for, it was it was uh, like the, the Chinese show. And Mike Moraheim and Amy Moraheim stayed at the MDI the entire night. We started at 11 at night and we finished at like 7 in the morning or 8 in the morning and Mike and Amy stayed there the entire night watching and took us out to breakfast the next morning it was me I think it was me, Sloot, Rob and Jack maybe at the first one and maybe Sours too I'm trying to remember who was at the first one and Trekkie, Trekkie was also there but yeah, um, what a cool guy um, what a cool guy um, but that, that was way before that um, but yeah, no. So what ended up happening, um, what ended up happening, um, was Vlad offered me Dota and I'll never forget. He was like, he's like, I see you don't have a job. He's like, this will be good money. And he goes, but everybody's going to fucking hate you. This is Dota after all. He's like, are you ready for everybody to tear you apart? And I was like, yeah, I'm ready. And I went there and sure enough, the Dota community, uh, welcomed me, uh, welcomed me and uh the rest was history you know um the the rest was really history with dota and then i ended up getting to do ti9 and then i started streaming stream was stream was doing pretty well stream was actually doing really well you know i hit 10k subs i hosted ti9 stream was doing really well and then i said to asmin and s fan hey I think that we should, and this, everybody was having this idea at the same time. I was like, I think we should work on this crazy idea of an org. And Tips got involved. And Tips is one of the hardest workers I've ever met in my entire life. I'm lucky to know him. Uh, Mizkif got involved. And he is one of the best content creators I've ever met. Lucky to know him. And sure enough, this crazy thing started to form. And all of a sudden, you know, more and more people were involved who were really talented and took a pretty big step away from streaming, kind of when streaming was starting to be the most successful for me that it was. But I really believed in it. And, you know, he here I am now. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that that's basically the, the story of everything. And I'm very fucking happy. And I still can't fucking believe that, uh, you know, the stream is where the stream is at. And, yeah.